But water retention leads basically to higher blood pressure, okay? That's an end point, I guess, not only the look, uh, people want to look bloated or feel bloated. We're here with a special guest, and we'll have more about this topic after this, so keep watching. So we're here today with our special guest, Nelson Virgil from Excel Mail. Uh, it's all connected. I want to talk about another subject that is connected to water retention, but it's not obviously the cause or anything. But water retention leads basically to higher blood pressure, okay? That's an end point, I guess. Not only the look, uh, people don't want to look bloated or feel bloated. I definitely don't. Or feel out of breath when you go out of, um, you go up the stairs or you do your cardio at the gym. That's when I notice, oh man, it's like, God damn, I'm, I'm sorry. I shouldn't That's be. Right. That's right. Like, okay. You can swear. It's not, it's it's not be <laughs> uh, For me, that's really an obsession. So I have to, I have to be more strict. And when I do eat well and low carb and more protein, more vegetables, no alcohol, more water, um, not put so much salt on my fried eggs in the morning, etc. It gets better right away. I lose four pounds of water within three days, and I do cardio, and I'm good. Not today. I'm actually bloated today. But anyways. I don't think you look bloated. <laughs> well, I was bloated. Anyway, yeah. so um, the other thing that actually really is connected to that blood pressure, which is my issue, by the way. I, I'm on blood, blood pressure meds, and I've always had high blood pressure, even before testosterone. It's, it's a genetic, my mom has blood pressure, my dad. So I think some of us have the, the genetic predisposition. But also connected to blood pressure and worsening blood pressure is the high hematocrit that happens is the number one side effect of testosterone, especially injectables. Number one, number one side effect of testosterone is increased red blood cells, uh, is stimulation of obviously the bone marrow. Um, testosterone decreases this uh, liver peptide called uh, hepcidin, hepcidin that actually modulates iron absorption. I'm, I'm learning a lot, I've been reading for years, but just lately, in the past six months, I've been reading a lot about iron uh, homeostasis, so balancing yeah. how the body uses iron on testosterone, how ch things changed, because testosterone makes the body produce more red blood cells, uh, more hemoglobin, uh, which require more iron, so the body adjusts itself, decreases ferritin, which is uh, an iron transporter, and, um, and some of us may actually go too low on the ferritin and actually get tired even on testosterone. So the uh, almost having symptoms of anemia when in fact our blood work looks okay. So I'm really, that's my new obsession in, in reading uh, all about hepcidin and whether or not some men, especially men that are giving blood um, too frequently because of high red blood cells and hematocrit are suffering from an uh, iron storage deficit in their bodies so they start feeling more tired on testosterone and that's another question I get Nelson I felt great for a few weeks and now I'm starting to feel tired again um, is this so after, the, after the phlebotomy or for the therapeutic phlebotomy no, 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 before, before. Okay. so obviously hematocrit I tell them get your hematocrit checked you know CBC and you know sometimes they're high at 53 54 or even higher um, some guys are debating whether or not you even need to, to worry about this. But, yeah, I was going to ask you about that too. Um, well, we can talk about that because there's an, okay, the altitude uh, theory, which is BS in my point of view. High hemorrhagia in many studies, not only increases blood pressure, uh, some headaches. Um, it can be connected to sleep apnea, which doesn't make any things better. I've got sleep apnea. You know, so uh, the only two things know. keeping me know. alive are the sleep apnea or the CPAP and the testosterone. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a game changer for a lot of people. I tr I did three sleep studies, <laughs> but I couldn't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so they couldn't get my. But I have, uh, and it's actually fancy now, especially with COVID. People mm -hmm. are buying these uh, oxygen meters. You know, oh yeah, the, the, to your saturation. Meters. So I have one of those that I put before I go to sleep. I sleep with it. And it sends the data to my to my cell phone okay. on oxygen uh, saturation. So I actually go down twice a night, at least to the low 80s, which is it, not good. It, even with you have CPAP though as well? Or? No, I don't. No, no. I tried a CPAP and it was CPAP not for me. I, I really tried. My partner actually uses it and changed his life. 
Um, but what I was saying, I was trying to get at with the blood pressure situation, which is worsened by sleep apnea, as yeah, we all it's true. It's, it's also uh, the hematocrit issue and the iron um, situation that I'm looking at. A lot of guys are complaining about fatigue, and when I tell them to do a uh, panel, an iron, yeah. ferritin, iron, iron, and all that, they come, down, saturation. they come down actually low. Um, and some of them are, are obviously, I tell people, do not give blood more than every 50 days to, usually three months is good, um, and be careful with your ferritin and your iron stores if you're giving too frequently. So there is this anxiety, I think it's even worse than estradiol on Excel mail, this anxiety of the catch-22 that people get into with their donations yes. and their matter credit. It's a vicious circle. I, I've only had to donate three times in 34 years, so I'm one of those Okay. that stabilized, my hematocrit stabilized uh, in the first year. And a lot of guys do stabilize. But some guys, the older men, there's some studies actually for older men tend to have more problems. Those, well, that, those that smoke, they're screwed because smoking in itself increases hematocrit. It, you know, it decreases your oxygen saturation. So sometimes I see guys with high hematocrit that are not on testosterone yet, and they're like a 53. I say, are you smoking or, are you, or do you have sleep apnea? You either... Either one of those two, or yeah, and that's that's an issue that I'm seeing a lot of a, a lot of suffering about. We see a lot when when the doc sees uh, or any of the doctors see uh, the high hematocrit and hemoglobin, especially the hemoglobin, it's an, a red flag to check, and we check before as well when the patients come through if they have any issues with snoring even because that could be a red flag potentially, and then we ask them, and there've been many men that we've been able to direct to a sleep clinic and they were diagnosed with sleep apnea. And so that's usually the uh, one of the most common causes that we see for the elevation of hematocrit, because it could be other men with a much higher uh, trough level of free and total testosterone, but yet their, their hematocrit and hemoglobin are just perfect. I mean, just you know, 170 or, or even below. Um, so they're, they're usually okay. I, I suppose the other question is, uh, like we were talking about, you know, at what level should you be concerned? Like Dr. Neil Rousier, um, I was quite happy here. Um, one thing I, I thought was interesting that he said, oh, well, you know, um, polycythemia vera is not the same thing as erythrocytosis. And the mm -hmm. question is, erythrocytosis secondary to not kidney issues, but secondary to uh, um, testosterone replacement, should that be as much of a concern as someone who lives in high altitude? So he was linking the two. So I, I don't know what you've come across in, in your research, but um, yeah. I, who wants to give blood all the time if they don't have to? Well, um, I, I looked into this because this is very much discussed on Excel Mail. This uh, equivalence with a high altitude hematocrit. I looked at all the data on high altitude. The hematocrit could be probably as high as 54, 55 in, in the Andes yeah. for some. And, and they actually, the body is a very smart thing to balance itself they do balance out around 53, 54. Okay. But to have a hematocrit that keeps raising to 60, 62, 58, it's, it's where you get into trouble, right? Um, cardiovascular, you have a thick blood, you have a headache. You guys always complain about headaches. Yeah. Uh, flushing of the face, uh, especially when you go to the gym, some guys get almost purple, uh, high blood pressure. So there are many other endpoints, many other you know, comorbidities that show up the thing about 53, let me tell you what the thing about 53 is, okay. is the fact that it's almost a like magic number where they reject you in the United States at a blood center mm -hmm. to donate blood. Meaning donate means they're not going to charge you for a, for a draw. There's a difference between blood donation and therapeutic phlebotomy. They're both the same, the same thing. You're basically letting go some blood, at one unit. One you don't require a prescription. <clears throat> One, they're giving you donuts and kissing you because you're an amazing human being giving blood. The other one, they basically dispose of your blood because you may have an issue, because you have a high hematocrit and you may have a genetic you know, uh, illness or some, something related to a problem, a medical problem. So it becomes uh, something that your doctor needs to call in and order. Here we're lucky in Houston because we have one order is good for two years. 
And we're also lucky because the FDA, after a lot of activism, the FDA actually sent a guidance to all blood donation centers to accept testosterone, um, uh, uh, blood donations from testosterone men, testosterone replacement, um, men with testosterone replacement, which before it was discarded as a hazardous waste. Mm. Uh, in most countries, like I have guys that are coaching New Zealand, those poor guys who cannot even get an order. You know, it's a long story, but you can actually Google New Zealand Excel mail that come. And there's a huge discussion. There's some countries where the doctors are stopping testosterone replacement at 50 to 53. They're just stopping it. No consideration about blood donations or therapeutic phlebotomies. So the UK, obviously, you guys are, have come a long way, the United States too, but you would be amazed worldwide how many guys are suffering because their doctors make them stop testosterone at a hematocrit of 52, 53. I don't think 53 is a magic number. I just think it's, it's the number where usually men around the United States uh, are told, well, you, have, you need to have a doctor call in the order instead of, oh, sit down. We're more than happy to have you. Give us your blood because they check hematocrit with really inaccurate little meters at the blood centers that are actually usually off anyways. When I do a blood test and they're usually much higher the finger prick tests or the, even the little, uh, they take a little tiny drop of blood and they put in their little yeah. device and it's usually much, much higher. But yeah, they want to get you down below 50, even in a 48. Yeah. I, I had to go through that actually in the, in the US when I was there. I went through several, almost it seemed like every other week I was going back to, to um, do the therapeutic phlebotomy. And they said, oh, you know, you've got to be careful that iron's going to build up around your organs. <laughs> but I'm like, I don't, no, have, no, that, I don't have that condition. I, mm. That's polycythemia vera. So I just, I just needed to give some, like, you know, take off some blood because uh, it's too high the amount of erythrocytes. But yeah, were, it's, not it's, about the, it's not about the iron. So I'm glad you brought that up. It's not, not in testosterone. Testosterone, the body adjusts iron uh, consumption and decreases ferritin to adjust. So we don't have a buildup of iron as hemarocrit goes up. Let me but tell those, you that. I know, but those are what they, those, uh, the nurses thought, because those are the typical patients they were seeing for polycythemia vera, but they couldn't imagine that I was a, a different case type. Of course, you know. Now there's, uh, in the States, obviously, because testosterone is such a humongous industry, now there's awareness in the blood centers that, okay, these guys are not polycythemic. These guys are testosterone replacement patients. So there's actually, a, well, but even 10 years ago, I've been around forever, this was a struggle to even get a doctor to agree to call in an order, okay? So we've come a long way in the United States, but we've been using testosterone for a lot longer than any other country, a lot more volume, a lot more pharmaceuticals pushing it, mm -hmm. uh, many products, and we also have a cash uh, side of the field where you can access it better. So I'm glad that many countries may be learning from our mistakes, uh, I'm glad I see, I have obviously not been all familiarized with the UK until I got to talk to you guys and all that. And I see what the guys are posting on Excel mail, but it, the UK has come a long way, a long way from even 10 years ago and this issue and other issues, but, uh, you've been dealing also with estradiol sensitive testing access yeah. and HPV and, uh, we are too, we're about to enter uh, an ACG access issue. So. So thanks again, Nelson, for joining us for another good episode. And if you like the content on today's video, uh, please hit the like button. That really helps the algorithm. And if you would like to comment, we appreciate your comments. So please leave those. And if you have any ideas for new videos, we're more than happy to hear what those are. Uh, again, if you can subscribe to the channel, that helps a lot. And we hope you enjoy the content today. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.